Are you ready to crack IGCS Economics MCQs? Here are five of the trickiest questions from the May June 2024 paper Solved, Explained and Made Simple. Let's go. The first question I have picked is on opportunity cost. A firm is deciding whether to produce good X or good Y for the next five years. The revenue from good X is 20,000 per year and revenue from good Y would be 18,000 per year. The question is, what is the opportunity cost of producing X? Now, let's first understand what is opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the revenue lost from not choosing the next best option. Now, this question is a bit tricky. What do you think is the right option? You can pause the video and try it out. Some of us might choose option A because we think that's the opportunity cost. But if you look at the question carefully, it says the opportunity cost for the next five years. It means that you have to calculate total amount lost for five years, which would be 18,000 of good Y not being produced into five, which is actually $90,000. So the correct answer is $90,000. Now this is question seven from the paper. The question is, a firm changes the price of its product and finds that its revenue increases. Which combination of price change and price elasticity of demand would have caused this? And these are the options. Let us quickly recap the related concepts. Mm -hmm. Remember that total revenue is equal to price times quantity. If demand is elastic, in case of elastic demand, a small change in price would cause a larger percentage change in demand of a good. Therefore, the total revenue would decrease a lot in case the price rises. Another hack you should remember in these cases is that price and revenue, they move in opposite direction in case of elastic goods. Opposite applies to the inelastic demand. And in case the demand is unit elastic, total revenue stays the same when price changes. You can pause the video here, go through these to get the clarity of concepts. Now, based on this knowledge, let us go back to the question. In this question, the firm has changed the price and it has caused the revenue to rise. Now, this can happen only when demand is inelastic. Why? Because if we assume that the price has risen, the drop in quantity demanded would be smaller than the percentage increase in price, which would ultimately cause the revenue to increase. So, the correct answer would be option C. Here, price elasticity of demand is between 0 to 1 and price is rising. And also, if you check the relationship between price and total revenue, here they are directly related. They are positively related. Now, let's quickly check the other options. Why not A? In this case, this is the case of inelastic demand only, but it means the price is falling and quantity doesn't rise much in case of inelastic demand. So revenue would fall rather than rise. Why not B? This is the case of unit elastic demand. Revenue stays the same regardless of price change. And why not D? This is the case of elastic demand where a price hike causes a big drop in quantity. So revenue falls. This is question 11 from the paper. The question says that a trade union negotiates a rise in wage rate from WO to W1. What is the amount of unemployment that results from this wage rise? Now here, if you look at this question, the correct answer would be option D. Why? At the higher wage W1, the quantity of labor supplied increases to L2. More people want to work, but firms only want to hire up to L1. They want to demand less labor because of the higher cost at this higher wage. So the difference between L2 and L1 is the number of people who are willing to work but can't find jobs at this wage. That is how we measure unemployment on these diagrams. So the correct option would be option D. Let's quickly cross check the other options. Why not A? A is just telling you L1. What is L1 showing you? It is just showing you the quantity of labor demanded. That is how many workers are willing to work at wage higher at higher if you hire them at W1. It tells us nothing about the gap between supply and demand. So it doesn't represent unemployment. If you look at option B, L O L2, this range includes 
L0, the original equilibrium level of employment before the wage rise. It's irrelevant here. We are only interested in the situation when the new situation where the wages have risen. It just overcomplicates. Why not C? This is again a wrong direction. L1 is higher than L0 at the new wage rate. So L1, L0 would suggest that employment decreased. Remember, unemployment is based on the difference between supply and demand. There is a pro tip here. Whenever a wage is set above the equilibrium, like W1 greater than W0, always check where the labor demand curve intersects the new wage, which will give you L1, this point, L1. And the second thing we have to check is where the labor supply curve intersects the new wage. That will give you L2 and unemployment would be L2 minus L1. I hope it's clear. This is question 29 from the paper. The question is, what is most likely to cause the demand curve for US dollars to shift from D1 to D2? The correct answer is B, a fall in US interest rates. Let's understand why. When interest rates in the US fall, American financial assets become less attractive to foreign investors. Investors look for better returns elsewhere, which means they won't need to convert their currency into US dollars. As a result, demand for the US dollars would decrease, shifting the demand curve for USD leftward from D1 to D2. Now, let's break down why the other options are incorrect. Option A is a fall in Chinese interest rates. If Chinese interest rates fall, US investments become relatively more attractive, prompting investors to convert yuan into dollars. This would rather increase demand for USD and not decrease it. If you look at option C, Faster U.S. economic growth, this one is quite tricky. Remember that faster economic growth can lead to both a change in demand and supply of currency. Faster growth in the U.S. would attract foreign investors looking for better returns. To invest, they would buy U.S. dollars, rather they would increase demand. Also, Americans may import more. When an economy grows faster, incomes rise, consumers have more disposable income to spend on goods and services, including imports. Businesses also tend to invest more during periods of economic growth, which can lead to increased demand for imported machinery, equipment, raw materials. But this would all lead to supply of dollars, not the demand. So overall, faster U.S. growth is more likely to increase demand for dollars and not reduce it. So that's why this option is also incorrect. Option D is reduction in the U.S. government budget deficit. Now, this may increase long-term investor confidence, but it doesn't have a direct short-term effect on the demand for U.S. dollars. It's too indirect to explain the immediate shift shown in the graph. Now, this is question 30th from the paper. The question is that Brazil had a balance of payments current account deficit of US $23.5 billion. Which policy is most likely to reduce the current account deficit in Brazil? The correct answer for this question would be A. Depreciate Brazil's currency. Why? If we depreciate currency of Brazil, it means it will become a weaker currency which will make the exports cheaper for foreigners and imports more expensive. When exports rise and imports fall, it will automatically correct or improve our current account situation. Now, let's check quickly why not B. Reduce rates of income tax in Brazil. Lower taxes might boost spending, but it would also increase imports, which would rather worsen the deficit. If you look at option C, reduce subsidies to Brazil's exporting firms, it would only hurt exports and exporters. So that's not a correct option. And if you look at the third, uh, last option, reduce tariffs on Brazil's imports. Lower tariffs make imports cheaper, which is again bad for current account. So the best option is option A. That's it for today's tricky MCQs. How many did you get right? Let me know in the comments. If this helped you, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and share it with a friend who is revising too.